Hi everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Minyard. It comes in 135 scale and what I have here it's the SDEC FZ34-1 so it's initial version as you can see it's early modification but it comes as the interior kit so it might be interesting for some others who would like to copy it in a small scale and uh, actually have all of the features and I'm saying the small scale because even though it's a 135 there are already the bigger scale <laughs> alternatives available so that's why it's more or less reasonable and as you can see the box size is rather typical for such type of release from mini art here is comparison with my hand we have really beautiful box art here the kit number is 35410 uh, and we have the interior kit sign here and then on the side I was trying to understand what the aircraft type here on the box art and I'm still not clear nevertheless uh, here you can see also some information about the kit manufacturing safety devices and on the opposite side you will find the small sign of the cartograph because decals are coming from this famous company and we have also six marking options which are quite colorful I would say surprisingly colorful so there will be definitely something to choose out of from and this is a top opening box so just give me a second maybe I'll also take a closer look at the aircraft to me it looks like P47 but of course feel free to write your comments because I will be happy to hear your opinion about this and for the parts as you can see everything is sealed into one plastic bag so I will need scissors in order to cut through and then we will gradually check all of the sprues but the parts count is really impressive this is the interior kit so do not expect that it will be the shake and bake it kit and it's in the meaning I would say that you have to spend some time uh, trying to understand how to properly paint these parts what should be installed in advance what should be also weathered in advance so it's plenty of work and it would be really strange to uh, let's say argue with this and I have some experience with interior kits from Minyard so you definitely uh, want to check some of them on the YouTube channel because I have the build reviews and now I'm just opening the first envelope with the Minyard logo. This one is dedicated to the P fret. So here we have a mix of parts because we have the interior kit. So that's why we will be getting also some interior features as well. And this is really good because the P parts are actually handy for a bit more detailed look on 135 scale kits. So definitely a welcome addition. And usually Minyard P is very easy to deal with i did not have any issues with uh, bending and installing it and it's quite durable as well so in some cases you can bend it several times in case you do something wrong then it will not break down but again it's better not to test it uh, just intentionally so it's a small let's say safe walk from the possible accidents but that's not something to rely on. Next, we continue with uh, something what I was just opening. It's a clear plastic bag with a clear sprue. So here we have all of the periscopes as well as the lenses. And molding quality looks fine, but there are no masks included. So in case you would like to have masks, it's up to you because you will be cutting them. And uh, I'm still wondering why Minyard keeps ignoring the masks because it's not such a difficult thing, especially considering that the models are being developed in 3D nowadays. So it's not that uh, hard task to do the uh, masking templates. What I'm showing now is the decals. As you can see, they're coming from Cartograph. We have several types of the license plates. We also have some stencils and interior decals. So again, whole vehicle will get a lot of uh, small details which are really noticeable on 130 five scale kit so it's just a matter of installing them properly and you should be good to go and now we can finally talk about the parts so i'm going to start with one of the biggest frames and here i think i will have to zoom out so that you can see the whole frame so here we have the mix of parts these are the uh, sections of the engine if i can say so so as you can see everything should be assembled out of separate panels and overall quality looks fine but it's also worth thinking how to expose the engine because even though this is an interior kit uh, some door is just close it inside and i don't understand such approach to such builds because you get it as one of the main features in this kit and it's definitely worth 
working a bit extra in order to show it on the finished model. Next we continue with uh, two identical plastic sprues and I'm already throwing it out of my hands. Uh, so here we have uh, identical plastic sprues for the suspension and well just like any German vehicle of that time it has a very uh, complex uh, complicated or complex suspension and it will take some time you will have to repeat the same operation several times so yeah it's something what you should be ready for but I think the final result is completely worth it because in 135 scale Minyar did a great job and you have a lot of stuff copied out of the box you don't have to do any scratch building and that's the beauty of this kit because you get all of the important things straight out of the box. Next we continue with another large plastic sprue so this one is dedicated to the turret I'll just place it like this zoom out now you can see that, well, for the turret, the external assembly, if I can say it this way, it should be typical, so it means combining the separate panels together, while inside you'll have to work a bit, because there is a lot of things uh, being installed inside, you will see it in the assembly manual, and that's something what will again require from you some careful planning, because otherwise you might end up with a weird results when some parts will be really difficult to reach and really difficult to paint as well. Next we continue with more internal parts. This ones will be going to the fighting compartment. Uh, this molding quality here looks fine to me and there are a lot of pre-molded features as well so uh, pay attention to how they should be painted. Maybe it's also a wise idea to find some reference material so that you can use it for even more convincing look. Next we continue here with the lower hull section panels. So these ones are I would say universal for even for the version without interior. So as you can see you will have to combine the separate panels together. We have nice floor panel. This is definitely a good material for some weathering done. So think twice before closing the um, all of the hull panels. And maybe it's also worth thinking on how to show what is inside because of these features. Next, another interior features. I'm just checking them closer while I'm having them in my hands, but now you can take a closer look as well. So a lot of tiny parts, I would say even thin parts, so be careful with them. And uh, recently Minyard Plastic is, uh, which is used, it is quite tough. Well, relatively tough in comparison with what we had before, but still it's worth uh, paying attention to such thin elements because it's still very easy to break them and then very difficult to fix them. Next we continue with more parts for the hull. Here we actually have the separate hatches as well, so this is one of your chances to show what is inside. And just like in any other interior kit from Miniart, we have all of the hatches molded separately, so this is definitely a useful feature because otherwise how do you show the interior? Maybe just as a cutout version, but this is also a bit of a cumbersome build. Here we continue with the stowage boxes. As you can see we have some guiding elements for the proper installation and here from the opposite side we have also some guiding tabs which will help you with alignment. I wouldn't say it's something special but it's a useful thing which will uh, speed up the assembly process. Another useful thing is the jerry cans. So as you can see they are supplied on three sprues and this is something what some brands prefer to skip on so they include only a few. Here we get uh, quite a set and it's up to you whether you would like to use all of them or maybe just store some for your spare parts box. This is also works and I saw some Madoras just installing a few jerry cans and leaving some aside for the future builds. Here we have some radio equipment for the interior again a lot of pre molded features so if I bring it closer like this you can see what I'm talking about these features definitely deserve a careful painting with a sharp brush and then you will have a nice result. Next we have two identical plastic sprues again for the interior and also for some of the drivetrain parts as far as you can see I was just checking it closer but here you can take a closer look as well so again a lot of thin parts, note also how the seats are designed, so we have some supports promoted already or framing, so definitely a good material for additional weathering on those seats. Next we continue with the road wheels and those ones are supplied, I was actually expecting less 
frames for the road views but as you can see they're coming on these white frames and we have four of them so i will leave only one here and you can notice that each wheel should be assembled out of separate sections and also on the uh, tire walls we have also the external features here as you can see so it's quite a smart design of course you do not have the weight effect duplicated here but for this you have to go for some aftermarket maybe 3d printed or resin casted okay so i will put these wheels aside and next more suspension parts i think this frame is similar to what we saw before as you can see a lot of suspension arms and yeah it's uh, from what i see here and from what i remember from the assembly manual it's definitely a lot of fun procedure so be ready for this here we have the top hull section and i'm glad that this part is molded as a single piece part because you won't have to deal with the separate panels alignment and uh, this is very handy thing which will speed up the assembly process and still we have the engine bay area uh, cover molded separately and of course some of the hatches are molded separately here inside we have some guiding elements and that's pretty much all you get on this part okay and last but not the least is this sprue so do not be surprised that here we have two other versions of the wheel because this one will be used as a spare wheel we also have some parts for the interior some various bulkheads and again molding quality and parts division looks fine this is the front bumper by the way and if i flip it over here you can see the difference between the wheels so one version assembles out of two halves and another version assembles out of separate sections okay and now we can finally move to the assembly manual so that you can understand how all of this stuff goes together. So I will just zoom out a bit. And okay, so this is a cover printed brochure. We have short list of the features, but we do not have the parts map. And straight on the first pages, we start with the marking guide. This one is from Western Front 1944, another one from August 1944 and next is the parts map so here the small tip is that mini art does not mark the unused parts so that's why it's more for checking whether you have all of the parts but not for checking which parts can be left aside and assembly process starts from the wall recall section straight away you are working with some internal elements as you can see for example the drivetrain so be ready for this and i can see the interior floor panel there going in place then we go with more stuff being installed in the fighting compartment I can see that even metal wire is being suggested and as usual Minard does not suggest the thickness I'm not sure why it is being ignored because this is quite important element for uh, I would say ease of replicating up to scale look so it's better to have the length as well as the thickness but there are none of those details are specified and the next page you can see also engine assembly process so um, I think for what you get out of the box, this is very detailed power plant. As you can see, there is even some wiring suggestions given. Again, no length, no thickness. This is really strange because as far as I remember, in some releases, Miniard at least specifies the length. Here, we do not even have the length. Next, we continue with the top hull section. Again, a lot of panels being combined here and there from inside and from outside next you can see the suspension being assembled note that the jerry can holders are replicated with p parts so this is some bending to be done and here you can see also some external panels being installed so as you remember we had separate hatches you can assemble them in open position this is something what is also suggested by miniard as one of the assembly options and the same goes for example for the side view mirrors and here we install the antenna which is replicated with p parts then we continue with the turret so for the turret you can see we have several options of the main barrel also several options for the main gun and then we also can open the hatches of course and here you can see the install of this turret so here you can see open or closed variant and i'm still not clear whether it is replicated with yeah it is so be ready for this because it will be also a bit of a tricky thing to do but here you can see another marking option from february 1945 and next winter camouflage looks nice by the way here we continue with the germany spring 1945 another one from czechoslovakia spring 1945 green vehicle and here is another one from germany spring 1945 and here we already have the camouflage 
two colored ones but still quite fun to replicate so overall we have another nice version of this vehicle it should be already available you can get it in Madele Max together with the previous versions and of course I will be happy to hear your opinion so do not forget to write it here in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video review as usual so stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video bye